Hey, my name is Rick Thompson, and I'm the pastor here, and welcome, if, especially if this is your first time. We're having a party today. Today is a happy birthday party, okay? And I'll get into that in just a moment, but I want you to think about your birthdays growing up. Does anybody have a favorite birthday that you can remember? All right? Now, we're not going to share those right now, but do we have favorite parties that you can remember? Yes, yes, Absolutely. Because when parties happen, people are saying to us, hey, you are special, you mean something. And at every party, we get gifts, right? Okay. Uh, let me just start off with a couple things. I, I heard some stories. Uh, a young lady by the name of Kay said, on my father's birthday, my soon-to-be six-year-old Keelan called my dad to wish him a happy birthday. And so I heard him, heard him on the phone saying, uh, Poppy, are you five years old? And so with a twinkle in his eye on the other end of the line, he says, yes, sweetie, I'm five years old. Are, are, are you six years old? And he didn't know how to answer. Yeah, of course, I'm six years old. And at that, he puts down the phone. He says to me, to mom, says, mom, Poppy has run out of all the numbers and he's starting all over again. <laughs> Think about how old. Old ain't so bad. Okay, Jean Calment is the oldest living human whose age can be verified. On her 120th birthday, they asked her, what is your vision for the future? She said, very brief. <laughs> Let's be honest. Another woman was asked the benefits of living to the age of 102. And after a pause, she answered, there's no peer pressure. And finally, I love this one. It doesn't fit, but it's so funny. Finally, John Fetterman, he says this. It's an elder, elderly woman who died in his church. He's up in Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin. Having never married, she requested no male pallbearers for her funeral. She had written out her memorial service, and she said, they wouldn't take me out while I was alive. I'm not going to let them take me out when I'm dead. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but I had to say that. <laughs> so we have birthdays, and on our birthdays we get presents, right? Gifts are awesome. I want to tell you a story. It's out of the Bible. If you have your uh, uh, Bible, open up to John chapter 3. doesn't sound like a birthday story, okay? But uh, I'm going to talk about how this is a birthday. Uh, Jesus is talking to a fellow by the name of Nicodemus. Nicodemus is a religious leader. He doesn't want to be associated with Jesus because of uh, the people he lives among. He's the Pharisee, and the Pharisees and Jesus didn't always see eye to eye. And so he comes to Jesus by night, and he uh, says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform these signs you do unless God were with him. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can anyone be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked him. Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus answered, truly I tell you, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Don't be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. The wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Now, what Jesus is talking about here is something that we call new birth or regeneration. Okay? All of us have been born by water. That was a euphemism in that day to mean that you've come into this world. The day that you were born of water, you were born into this world. That's your first birthday. But the day that you were born of the Spirit, that's your second birthday. You were born into His world. And there's a difference between your first birthday and your second birthday. Let's talk about what happens on our second birthday. You cannot enter God's world, Jesus says, if you've only been born of water, of flesh, if you're just like the rest of us like this. That, that doesn't get us to God. You must also be born by the Spirit. You've got to be born twice. I heard a gentleman from North Carolina. He met another person that happened to be from North Carolina. And he said, hey, you're from North Carolina? What part? And they, they exchanged cities. And he said, you know what? I once heard of a guy from North Carolina who was born twice. And the man said, what are you talking about? Nobody can be born twice. And it opened the door for him to share his faith, how he was born physically, and then he was born spiritually. So that's just free. It's a tip for you to take, to talk to other people about your faith. 
Christian baptism signifies spiritual rebirth. And that's what I want to talk about because in just a few minutes, we're going to baptize two people right here. You don't know it, but over here is a baptismal uh, pool. We're going to take the lids off of that a little bit later. And we've got two people who are going to have a second birthday. We did this in the first service uh, at the 8 o'clock service. Right after the service was over, we had a, a gentleman, uh, not quite my age, maybe 10 or 15 years younger than me, said, I want to be baptized. And so we baptized him. But what happens on your second birthday? Here are three things, and I want you to write this down somewhere. Flip your bulletin over on the back and write this down, because I'm going to give you some extra scriptures that aren't up here, but I want you just to write down the address and go look at these afterwards. What gifts do you receive when you're baptized into Christ? Number one, you come to life. You really come to life. Your spirit is born. In fact, your whole life is born the way that God originally created and intended us to live. You come alive to God. All right, how many kids are here? How many kids are dressing up for Halloween this year? All right. How many kids are coming to Trunk or Treat this afternoon? Hey, Trunk or Treat, if you've never done that at this church before, a few years ago we had about 80 or 120 people that would show up for Trunk or Treat. We've grown to about 1,200 people. This place is crazy. Free food. Uh, we've got gifts uh, of candy and all of this kind of fun stuff. The trunks will be decorated. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. But this Halloween, you're going to see some funny costumes, and you're going to see some goofy costumes, and you're also going to see some scary costumes. The scary costumes are going to be like the zombie apocalypse. You're going to see the walking dead, people that are going to be dressed up. And, and you know the story of the TV show, The Walking Dead. Rick Grimes, former police, he wakes up from a coma, and he realizes there's been an apocalypse. Everybody's dead, pretty much, but they're not. They're still alive. They're just not tuned into what we're doing, and all they want to do is they're bent on destruction and making us like them. And so the whole plot is for him to try to, to lead his people away from them, to stay safe, to stay alive. And what they find out is that the things that are, that are in, deep down in us, when we're afraid, those come up, and we have to deal with that with each other just as much as dealing with what's going on out there. But the reason I talk about zombies, people going through life as if they're not tuned in to what's going on around them, except to destroy people, is because every day, in everyday life, there are people going through life without really living. They're not tuned in to what God is doing. They're not tuned in to what's really happening in this world. In John 10.10, 10, it's not on the screen, Jesus says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy, but I have come that they might have life and have it to the full so that you can truly live. And that's what he was saying here to Nicodemus. Flesh only gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit will make you alive. When you undergo baptism into Christ, you are born spiritually. Um, Translator Des Oatridge was working in Papua New Guinea among the Binumerians. And he came to this passage that we just read. And when it says born again, he was looking for a phrase that they could understand. And so his translator, who was a Binumerian and spoke the language as his mother tongue, shared with him a custom that they have. He says, you need to understand this, Des. Sometimes a person goes wrong and will not listen to anybody. We all get together in the village and place that person in the midst of us. The elders of the village will talk to him for a very long time. You have gone wrong, they say. All your thoughts, your intentions, your values are wrong. Now you have to become a baby again and start to relearn everything right. It was the answer this Bible translator was looking for. Today, the words of John 3.3 3 in Binumerian read, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he becomes like a baby again and relearns everything from God's word. That's the first gift you get on your second birthday, your spiritual birthday. And these guys who are going to be baptized are going to get that gift. They're going to come to life. Here's the second gift that you get on your second birthday. You become all new. You become a whole new creation. It's a whole new you. This week, uh, Eugene Peterson, who was a mentor of mine, not personally, but I listen to him, and I, I watch him on YouTube quite a bit, 
and I uh, read his books. But every one of us, if you've ever read the message translation of the Bible, he is the one who wrote that for his congregation. Week after week, they would take the scriptures that we read and put it in the words that he knew his people spoke that day. And so in honor and memory of Eugene Peterson, who went to be with the Lord this week, he was promoted to glory. He was graduated into the presence of God this week. I'd like to read from the message translation of 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, now we look inside and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah, with Jesus, gets a fresh start, is created new. The old life is gone, a new life burgeons. It's all new. You've heard it said that uh, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, new things have become. You get a reset in life, a do-over, a restart. You become a whole new you. All right, I've got a birthday present here that I'd like to pull out and show you. I wonder what I get. Give me two hands. All right, who is this? Anybody know who this is? Does this give it away? Captain America. All right, Captain America. Y'all know who Captain America is. Is anybody going as Captain America this Halloween? Anybody at all? Anybody want to? Because I got a free costume right here. <laughs> All right? I'll see you afterwards. Here's the deal Clark Kent is Superman, right? Okay, one day he's Clark Kent. Everybody thinks he's Clark Kent. Sometimes he might forget that he's Superman and think that he's only Clark Kent. All right? Steve Rogers is Captain America. He may forget that he is Captain America and just assume the role of Steve Rogers. Sometimes you forget who you really are in Christ. That underneath of it all, you're a superhero. You've been given superpowers. And not superpowers like Batman. I like Batman. But Batman developed everything, right? It's like Iron Man. And I don't like Iron Man. He's cocky. I am Iron Man. But Spider-Man, he got bit. And on the inside, he got transformed and changed. And so his superpowers come from within, right? That's what happens on your second birthday. You are given a whole new identity. And it's not superpowers like Marvel or DC Comics would have us. These are divine gifts that God pours out upon his people to make us more fully human. Let me explain how this happens. On the day of Pentecost, when Peter was preaching to the masses of people that had shown up to Jerusalem, they all come and he starts preaching to them and he says, this Lord of life, this person, Jesus, You crucified. God made him the Lord. He's the one who saves us, and yet we killed him. He's dead. And they were cut to the heart. They didn't know what to do about that, and they're like, really? We all know that we're sinners, but we don't know what to do about it. We've killed the only church. Then Peter says this, Acts 2.38. I think it's up here. Peter said to them, change your hearts and lives and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. They asked the question, what must we do? What do we do? He says, repent and be baptized. Change your hearts and lives. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far away. It is for everyone the Lord our God calls to himself. Now, now, with this scripture in mind, there are two things Peter says happens when you recognize your desperate need for God to come clean before God because you're sinful. And nobody knows it better than, than you, than me. I know my sin more than anybody else. And then when you get desperate to come clean before God, he says two things happen. When you realize you're in trouble before the Almighty God, but that he sent his son to die in your place, the appropriate response is to repent and to turn to him and be baptized. That's how we do that. But when you do that, when you turn to God in baptism, two things happen. One, your sins get forgiven. All the bad stuff, all your mess ups, all the deliberate bad choices, the rebelliousness, the the things that you didn't even know were bad, but they became a habit over time. And now they've got you. The lies, the hurtful things you've done, everything has placed you under the wrath of God gets wiped out. That's why Jesus came to save sinners. And Paul says, the one who said that says, and I'm the chief among them all. And so I thank God that he forgives my sins. Jesus was sent to do just this. But a second thing happens. He doesn't just cleanse us from our unrighteousness. You receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Not only does your old life of sin get cleansed and forgiven, but your new life gets empowered by God's pure Holy Spirit. You are made cleaner than clean. How would you like to receive a gift that makes you new on the inside? That gives your heart new desires to do the good thing, the right thing, the God thing, and the power to carry it out. That's what happens to those who repent and turn to Jesus in baptism. They receive the gift of the Holy Spirit of God living inside them. Paul says this to a bunch of Christ followers in Ephesus in a letter he wrote that became part of our scripture in the book of Ephesians in chapter uh, 2, 422 to 24. This is not up here, but write down Ephesians 422 and 24. He says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self. It's a term meaning like to undress. Take off those old clothes, put on the new costume, the new uniform, okay? With regard to your former way of life, put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Be made new in the attitude of your minds and put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. He will write to the letter uh, to the Colossian Christ followers, these words in Colossians 3, 5 and following. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, being born of water, being born of the flesh, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil, evil desires and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Put those things off. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Therefore, he says this, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. These are your new clothes, your super, superhero outfit. That's what we get to wear underneath of this, whether people realize it or not when they first see us. But it won't take long until they're asking questions. What is it about your life that is different? Well, I am fully alive, and I'm a new, I've been made new on the inside. These are two things that he gives to us. And here's the third thing that, that happens. The third gift is that you get adopted into God's family. You get adopted. In Romans 8, 15, we read, you didn't receive a spirit of slavery to lead you back into fear, but you received a spirit that shows you are adopted as his children. With this spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit agrees with our spirit that we are God's children. You know, when a child is adopted, she receives a new name. She gets the family name. And it's a way of saying, it's not only we're treating you as a part of us, we're gonna name you as a part of us. And so to be adopted means to take on a whole new identity, a new family. How many of us could use a new name? I wonder how many people feel that my name is rejected. Well, now it could be included. Maybe you're known as unloved. How about chosen is the name given to you? My old name was dirty. Now it's saint or holy one, according to the Bible. It used to be called shameful. Now it's free from condemnation. Worthless, chosen. Helpless, God's co-worker. My name is hopeless. Well, you know what? Your new name is God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. I want you to say this out loud with me. I am a child of God. In Christ, I am a child of God. Don't forget. Don't forget what you wear. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget your name that he has given to you. Three people this morning receiving baptism. Two in this service, one in the other service. They're receiving second birthday gifts. They're coming alive, alive to God. Everything that God has dreamt and intended for them to become. They, they are be being made into new people. Their sins wiped away, the Holy Spirit deposited within them. And they have a new family name because they're adopted by God. But here's what's best of all. 
Every one of us who have been baptized in Christ and have received these gifts, those are amazing gifts. And, and that's the starting line. It's not the finish line. That's the starting line to get us into life the way God intended for us to live. But there's coming a finish line when we will graduate like Eugene Peterson did, like this 120-year-old lady, the oldest person who did, and they graduate into the presence of God. In 1 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4, we read this. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In God's great mercy, he caused us to be born again into a living hope because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now we hope for the blessings God has for his children. There are more blessings. These blessings which cannot be destroyed or spoiled or lose their beauty are kept in heaven for you. I wonder what all God has in mind to lavish on his children. Every one of us called by his name because of Christ. There are two more coming in. And uh, the Bible says that when one person turns, repents, and turns to the living God, there is a party in heaven among the angels of God before his throne for one lost sinner who has turned and come to him. And so we're going to celebrate uh, Jesse uh, Brannon and Riley Fournier to be baptized. But before we do that, our children are going to come and sing. I'm going to say a prayer. And in my prayer, I'm going to give you an opportunity, um, just between you and God, to, to respond if you've never been baptized, if you've never associated with Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can do that with a prayer. And we can talk later about doing what Riley and, and uh, uh, Jesse are going to do. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, you are amazing that you love us so much to throw a party for all eternity because you've called us, you've sent for us, you've sent Jesus, and we've responded by your Holy Spirit. Lord, would you cause us to be born again? Those who are being baptized today, of course, but those here who, who need it and desire it, Lord, but feel that they, they don't have it, that they've only been born once, they've only been born of water, of the flesh, but they'd like to be born of the Spirit. And if that's you, I'm just gonna simply, with everybody's head closed and, and, and eye, heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm just gonna ask you, if you would like me to pray for you, would you just slip your hand up for a moment so I could pray for, for you? Nobody looking around. I see some hands. I see some hands over here. I see some hands here, here, and here. Oh, I praise God. Praise God. I see those hands. Okay. The rest of us, let's all pray. Everybody pray for those folks. Father, there are some folks who just gave their hands into the air to say, God, I want to give you my life. I want to become associated with you. I want to follow Jesus. Lord, would you pour out your spirit into these? Would you seal them even as you forgive them their sins? Cleanse them from all unrighteousness and give your Holy Spirit new desires new gifts and purposes and drives. And Father, for all of us, would you help us to walk this out together, this new life that you have called us to. Thank you for celebrating over us the second birthday, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.